The American F-15 EX is a new super interceptor designed to patrol the world's most dangerous and disputed airspace in the South China Sea and Eastern Europe. In fact, NATO scrambled jets 570 times in 2022 to respond to Russian aircraft. That's more than once per day. And Japan is forced to scramble F-15s every time China violates their airspace. The number of Chinese airspace incursions has jumped up from 96 in 2010 to 675 in 2019. But critics have been quick to point out that the F-15 is ancient. It was originally manufactured in 1976 and it's quickly headed into retirement by now. Many are starting to question the logic of investing millions of dollars into upgrading the F-15 into the EX because it might seem like a step backwards in this modern, fancy era of stealth technology. But the truth isn't that simple. The new F-15 will have some new weapons and flight capabilities that modern stealth aircraft lack. Today, we're gonna dive into all of that, and we're gonna learn a little bit about where international airspace law came from in the first place, which is something every F-15 pilot needs to know about. But first, I wanna tell you about the folks that made this video possible, non-firing one-third scale goat guns. They manufacture model replica weapons with realistic dummy parts. Father's Day is June 18th, and if you haven't snagged a gift for your pops yet, you'll wanna head over to GoatGuns.com to check out their ridiculously huge selection of miniature die-cast metal replicas. They've got something for every type of dad out there, whether he's a gun lover, history buff, or gamer. These non-firing models are the perfect gift. And with over 15,000 five-star reviews, you know you won't be disappointed. They've got models from virtually every era, like the M1 Garand from World War II, the M16A1 from Vietnam, or even a brand new Russian AK-12 that just dropped. So no matter what war you wanna drop into, you'll be ready to rock. And right now, you'll get 10% off a pack of three and 20% off a pack of 10. Add some flair to your coffee table, desk, or shelf at home. You can support the channel by clicking the link below and grabbing some awesome non-firing replicas today. In producing the F-15 EX, we admittedly took the long scenic route. So the way it happened was during the early 2000s, the F-22 was supposed to replace the aging F-15, but its program's budget was slashed by 75%. This led to only 195 aircraft being purchased, which is about a third of what the US Air Force originally wanted. In 2009, the F-22 production line was completely shut down and it's been impossible to restart. This forced the Air Force to keep the old F-15 past its expiration date in order to maintain a fleet size large enough to respond to airspace violations in Europe and the Pacific at the same time. So in order to solve this problem, the United States Air Force decided to order 104 of the new upgraded F-15EX multi-role fighters, marking the first order of F-15s in over 20 years. Earlier this year, the United States Air Force announced that after two years of extensive testing and study, the latest upgrades to the F-15 platform had actually smashed a new record in terms of capabilities and expectations. What this means is that it's able to perform as both a fighter and a bomber, except at a much lower cost than the F-35. Now, according to Boeing, the new plans will extend the service life of the aircraft well into the 2030s, which would make it the longest serving fighter aircraft in American history. Unsurprisingly, like all decisions involving the military industrial complex, it was met with a bunch of support and criticism from political leaders and internet forum trolls. But to be fair, you can understand where they're coming from. The sticker price on the new F-15EX will run you about $80 million, while the most recent batches of F-35As cost slightly less at $78 million, leading many to rightfully question why the government has decided to spend more money on an old aircraft originally built in 1976 with zero stealth capabilities. Now to address the elephant in the room, yes, the F-15EX is about as far from a stealthy aircraft as you can get without painting it neon orange and emailing the bad guys that you're coming. But there are two valid reasons for this, mission specificity and international markets. Modern stealth aircraft are designed for highly contested airspace. This means stealth was prioritized over everything else at the cost of speed, maneuverability, payload capacity, operational range, and operating costs. The F-15 is a specific tool for a specific job. It excels at intercepting aircraft in areas that are in dispute in international territory. The second advantage is export market. Believe it or not, it was the push for upgrades by foreign nations like Israel and six other countries that essentially subsidized the cost of developing this model, and in turn, kept the R&D prices much lower than they would have been otherwise. 
and the EX was developed with export in mind as an alternative for nations without these large military budgets so they could still upgrade their existing fleet with a highly capable aircraft that won't break the bank. I think a lot of it comes down to its interceptor and escort capabilities. So an interceptor is a fighter whose design and armament are the best fit for responding to airspace violations and defeating invading fighters or bombers. For example, the F-15EX is a dual F-110 GE-129 engine. They're capable of generating 29,000 pounds of thrust. This allows the fighter to top out at a speed of Mach 2.5 or 1,650 miles per hour even at high altitude, faster than both the F-22 and F-35. In fact, this top speed makes the F-15EX the literal fastest fighter jet in the entire world. This gives it an incredibly fast response time to intercept enemy aircraft. We need only look at this recent footage that was released by the US Department of Defense showing an incident with a Chinese J-16 interceptor that flew in front of a US military recon plane that was casually flying inside international airspace. This dangerous move caused the U.S. recon plane to shake from the J-16's jet wash. If there had been two F-15s escorting it, this likely never would have happened. F-15 pilots are frequently one decision, or one Foxtrot 2, away from bringing the world to World War III. So it's important they have a strong understanding of international airspace law. My brain is going to stall just thinking of this. Typically, it's clear where a country's airspace is and when it's being violated, right? I mean, it's clear when I step from American soil to Mexican soil. With airspace, it's not so simple. Yes, a basic principle of international air law is that every country has complete and exclusive sovereignty over their airspace above its territory, including its territorial sea. But it gets confusing when we look at where international airspace begins. For example, when we look at the US administered airspace, it appears at first glance to be massive and extends about 6,000 miles from the western coast of the country all the way to Indonesia, and another 1,000 miles off the east coast. A lot of people look at this and think, well, that's unfair. The United States is trying to control aircraft halfway around the world with their fighter jets. But that's not entirely accurate, because this is just the US flight information region. People often confuse flight information regions for air defense identification zones. ADIS, or Air Identification Zone, is a very important concept for fighter pilots to understand. ADIS is an area of airspace over land or water in which a nation requires aircraft be identified, located, and controlled in the interest of their national security. A country will use ground radar and fighter jets to enforce this. Now this is a map of the United States Air Defense Identification Zone, and you can see it doesn't extend that far off the coast. From China's perspective, they claim the United States is being hypocritical here. Because I don't know if the United States would be cool if there were all kinds of J-16 Chinese fighter jets flying around the American ADIS, or if there were aircraft carriers from China just off the coast, like how the United States is off the coast of China. So yeah, it, it's, it's not lost on me. So all of these capabilities are meant to defend disputed airspace off a nation's coast. So where did the concept of military airspace and water even come from? Air defense identification zones were actually first established by the US in December 27, 1950 by President Truman. The US was the driver of setting up ADIS over the skies of Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and the Philippines, which was handed over to those countries. In 1982, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea set up the precedent that a nation's space extends 12 nautical miles from their coast. These imaginary lines in the sky are really life and death and have major consequences. For instance, in 1983, during the Cold War, a Soviet Su-15 interceptor made a mistake and shot down an American 747 passenger flight, killing all 269 people on board and heightening the Cold War tensions. This happened because the aircraft accidentally veered into Soviet ADIS and was mistaken for a bomber. It wasn't until November 23, 2013 that China first drew their idea of what their ADIS should look like. And the way they drew it just so happened to overlap with Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea's previously claimed ADIS lines. The real problem was China required all aircraft in what they claimed was their ADIS to identify themselves and report their flight information. China threatens that emergency defensive procedures will be taken if flights don't comply. Now I think the pilots of the F-15 are briefed on rules of engagement 
and what they can do when they encounter a Chinese or Russian aircraft. In the Army, we had similar briefings about our ROE, or rules of engagement. The idea is to de-escalate things. What has increasingly been happening is China believes that they should be in charge of more of what is considered international airspace by law. They're sending messages over radio to U.S. pilots demanding that U.S. aircraft leave. Order a military airplane, please go away quickly. I am United States military aircraft conducting lawful military activities outside national airspace. I am operating with due regard as required under international law. What a polite conversation. So both these military personnel on China and the US side are reading from a pre-approved script that likely came down from the highest levels of each's government. There is one important aspect to the F-15 EX development that we need to keep in mind that explains why we need an upgraded interceptor to protect disputed airspace. These aircraft are not a retrofit of older aircraft with a handful of upgrades super glued on top. These are brand new aircraft being manufactured from the ground up. So the new F-15EX will be able to fire 12 air-to-air -air missiles at once from a new outboard missile stations on it. This is up from the previous ability to fire eight missiles at once. The creator of the F-15EX at Boeing had previously stated that the fighter would actually be able to carry an insane 22 air-to-air -air weapons. However, we're not really sure if that capability will be adopted or if that's something that's gonna be added in the future. The reason this is important is because the Chinese J-16 claims to be able to carry 12 missiles. So the Air Force is trying to double the amount of munitions as compared to its rival. This is what Overmatch is all about. The F-15EX will also have the new ability to carry unconventionally sized munitions, most significantly of which is the hypersonic missile, which are as long as 22 feet in length, about 7,000 pounds each. That's about twice the length of your typical air-to-air -air aim Sidewinder missile, which only weighs 200 pounds. Stealth aircraft cannot do this, and so we start to see why resurrecting this old airframe and upgrading it is a smart move, because hypersonic missiles will play a key role in defeating enemy countermeasures. Since it doesn't rely on internal hardpoints that are necessary for stealth aircraft, instead it has traditional hard mounts on the wings and belly of the fuselage, giving it a total capacity of 29,500 pounds of ordnance payload. If this is true, it means the F-15EX can carry the highest weapons payload of any fighter jet in the entire world. Israel's even planning to modify the F-15EX to carry bunker-busting GBU-57 bombs. They say the plan is to blow up Iran's nuclear facilities. Now, a lot of people have pointed out that I pronounce nuclear wrong, and I wanna say it's not a joke. I just have like a speech impediment. I'm from, a, from Long Island where I learned how to say it wrong. I'm working with a speech therapist and a therapist on it right now. In order to deter Chinese fighter jets, the F-15EX needs to be able to spot them first. Much like how armor is important to tanks, radar systems are important to aircraft survival. For radar tracking, the F-15EX uses the new Raytheon AN APG-82, the latest in American aircraft radar that incorporates X-band Doppel pulses. Uh, what that translates to in human speak is that it's able to detect targets as high and fast as hypersonic cruise missiles down to small technical vehicles driving around the battlefield. According to the Warzone publication, this radar is truly the heart of the upgrade to the aircraft. This thing is beautiful. Stealth is important, but if you can see the enemy first and your missiles outrange them, then it's also a key aspect in air-to-air -air combat. Being an ASA or actively electronically scanned array means the F-15EX itself will be much harder to jam, while also making it harder for targets to detect if they are being tracked themselves. In an air-to-air -air fight, these tracking systems are so advanced that they're able to detect targets well outside the visual range of the pilot and instantly beam target information to the pilot to their heads-up display. The F-15EX is also able to track and strike ground targets, which is a crazy capability in its own right. To do this, the EX uses the new Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod. It weighs about 450 pounds and has much lower aerodynamic drag than the old Lantern systems that it replaces. The pod's FLIR, or thermal camera, allows observation and tracking through smoke and clouds and in low light, no light conditions. So if there's any UFOs or aliens flying around, this thing is gonna detect it. The Air Force plans to procure at least 522 sniper pods from Lockheed Martin's total contract, which is worth up to $843 million. 
to help put the concerns of the F-15 being old to bed, according to Boeing Vice President for the F-15 program, Prat Kumar, F-15EX has a fly-by-wire flight control system and one of the fastest, most capable mission computers in the world. It has an advanced all-glass cockpit that can display synthesized data in a way that is useful for the warfighter. It has the most advanced radar on any fighter jet and carries more weapons than any other fighter. Now, the new F-15 will also have a huge combat range of almost 800 miles which gives this aircraft the ability to intercept far away from where they were originally launched. The war zone Tyler Rajaway pointed out one of the main controversies about the F-15EX, its conformal fuel tanks, which are additional fuel tanks fitted closely to the profile of an aircraft that extend its range. It looks like the Air Force will not be acquiring this capability, which would be absolutely vital in the South China Sea in an air-to-air -air disputed role. The CFTs are standard issue on old F-15 Eagles, so it's a surprise to see that they're not getting funded here. Conformal fuel tanks do have a negative impact on an aircraft's performance. You know, when it comes to agility, speed, accelerations, we have to admit that it's not great for that, and it can't be jettisoned by pilots to regain that flight penalty like other fuel tanks have been in the past. It's critical for us to understand how cost-effective the new fighter will be. Currently, the F-15EX costs about $29,000 per hour that it's in flight, that's about a third less than the F-35A, which sits at $43,000 of operating per hour. More impressive though, is that the F-15 has a 20,000 flight hour lifespan for its airframe, when compared to the F-35's 8,000 flight hour lifespan. It also shares 75% of its parts in common with the old F-15 model already in use, meaning logistics supply chains are already in place and will largely stay the same. Now, I'm not saying any of this to knock the F-22 and F-35. Those are incredible aircraft. I'm just saying that the F-15 as an interceptor is a really great tool for dominating disputed airspace and has some key advantages. The F-15EX has this unique multi-role capability to target both air and ground targets. This is especially significant for seed operations. What are seed operations? This is an Air Force concept of suppression of enemy air defenses, also known as wild weasel and iron hand operations. So you're gonna be knocking out Russian S-300 anti-air before they can even detect your aircraft. The F-15 also has an advantage when it comes to the military buzzword of force multiplier. Its Legion pod allows it to pass off targeting data to another aircraft that is a better shot or is maybe within range. My understanding is the F-22 and F-35 can't do this. But what if you fired all your shots already? And you got all 12 missiles off. Then you turn to your traditional M61 Vulcan Gatling gun with six barrels that fire 20 millimeter high explosive or armor piercing rounds at 6,000 rounds per minute. Its magazine holds 500 rounds and it really gives that target kill a personal touch. Now the US military might end up with more or less of these jets because requested budgets go up and down. History has shown the Air Force can have a bit of trouble letting go of legacy aircraft, but not without good reason. We'll probably see some new space age quantum computer thrown into the cockpit to keep this thing in the skies into 2050. Let me know what you guys think of this new old aircraft in the comments below and make sure to like this video. I'm Chris Cappy, your average infantryman, signing off.